Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, in the studio Tuesday morning. What the hell is going on in Cincinnati? <laughs> Boy, they, this is a team. I think they were stale coming off the game with the Chiefs. They had to be. But having said all that, the Washington Commanders are not that bad a football team. They're not a championship caliber team. But when you go into Cincinnati and knock off the Bengals, and rather convincingly, 38-33, and that's a little misleading because Cincinnati scored in the final seconds of the game. But 38-33, the Washington Commanders got the win. And that, that Mike, surprises me quite a bit. Washington's playing a whole lot better football from what anybody expected them to. And how about the Buffalo Bills? Josh Allen, four touchdown passes, and the Bills just ran Jacksonville. I'm not sure Jacksonville even showed up for this game. Buffalo 47, Jacksonville 10, and Trevor Lawrence, who is the much-publicized quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars, a guy who was great All-America in college and a number one draft choice, has now lost eight straight games as QB for the Jags. Eight straight. Anyway, the winners were Buffalo and Washington last night in two NFL games on a Monday night. Almost too much until uh, we get it back on Thursday. Um, Chiefs head to Los Angeles. Kind of like last week, they faced a team that had some key players missing, and I think it helped us in the long run. Probably the same case in L.A. against the Chargers with that pro safety being out. He and Derwin James is an outstanding yeah. player, folks. Outstanding. Three-time Pro Bowl All-Star, and he has been suspended for one game. Now, I've got to tell you that if he appeals that suspension, he'll, he'll still be allowed to play. No word as to whether or not he's going to, but Derwin James... Now, the reason, well, what, what kind of the illegal drugs and all that was he taking? He's a dirty player. None. He is a rough... And maybe according Dirty. to the officials, and I'll I, say it. You can say it. All I, day. I can't. All day. But he has bent the rules. He has been thrown Repeated. out for unnecessary roughness. He is one of these guys who lowers his head intentionally when he hits, and you're not supposed to be able to do that. Anyway, Derwin James out for one game as of now. And again, pending an appeal, if he does appeal, he'll be allowed to play. But that hurts the Chargers even more because this guy's this guy's an outstanding player. Yeah, but when you play, have a dirty player repeatedly doing the same thing over oh, and over. Oh no, no, again. no, no! no. Don't, I'm, I'm not making excuses for. Well, him. No, no, I'm no! Doing. I'm just saying in general, they shouldn't. I mean, it's their own fault. He's hurting the team by acting like that. There's a there's a right way to do it and a wrong way. You can be a bruiser. You can be an enforcer. There are many guys in the league that do it, but do it the right way. He's a dirty player. It is what it is. <laughs> Um, so, there also has been a lot said in the uh, Kansas City side of things with the, I guess, underproduction from Travis Kelsey. I think it's definitely at this point where teams are really paying attention to him. But at the same time, do not discredit the man's blocking and what he does just allowing other guys to get open. That's huge. There is nothing wrong with a guy. He can play. He wants to play. But the fact of the matter remains that the Chiefs don't need him. They do not need his productivity because Rashi Rice has really come to the fore for as long as he's going to be around, and I suspect it will be this entire season. But Rice has been the go-to guy in the Chiefs' offense. It isn't Travis Kelsey. So Patrick Mahomes has said, hey, we don't need the guy. Throw him out there as a decoy, and he is a very good decoy, and he can still pass block. But keep in mind now that Kelsey is 34 years old. He's taken his share of hits. This has nothing to do, however, with him not wanting to play or the Chiefs not wanting him to play. It's just that in the scheme of things, he doesn't fit into their main game plan right now. When they need him, and they did need him, he caught a couple of passes the other day. Crucial ones. And they were. They were crucial passes. So you don't don't sell him short, but it's a matter of his being the lead receiver. No, he has been in the past, but he's not now. That was, I think, one of my most frustrating points on that Sunday night game was I think everyone across the country watching that game saw Kelsey open at least three or four times. Mahomes was the only one who didn't. But at the end of the day, I think the Chiefs, Mahomes, and Reed specifically like to play with their plays kind of like they play poker. They're not going to just throw, show that hand too soon. And Kelsey can be an ace in the hole when you need him. Keep in mind, Mike, uh, having been in a TV director's booth when a game is going on, it's an altogether different perspective. They can pick out things. You can't at the spur of the moment. A quarterback can't do that. TV, hey, hey, that guy was open over there. 
great. So what? There were well, three guys running it. after him at the same yeah, time. Come on. Uh, I know, but it's still frustrating. Honestly, Ned. I figured you'd be in a lot better mood this morning <laughs> when your team wins its first division title in over 10 years. You have to remember that uh, the Philadelphia Phillies, who did clinch the title last night, beating the Chicago Cubs 6-2, have been in the playoffs, but it has been as a wild card team. Long time. This time, they clinched the East title. They eliminated the challenging New York Mets from getting any, any hope. And the Atlanta Braves, who are a really good team, but have been so compromised by injuries this year. Philadelphia will take that, beat the Cubs 6-2, so they clinched the East title. Really, Mike, as if there was any doubt that they were going to. They were way ahead in the East, and everybody knew they would be. Now their goal is to get the best record. So as far as they go in the playoffs, they can have the home field advantage. Now here comes the key question. Does home field advantage mean as much in baseball as it might in, for instance, basketball or hockey or something or like football. that? Or football. Yeah, you're playing at home, but is it that much of an advantage? I don't think it is. Across the country, I would agree with you. In the city of Philadelphia, I would have to disagree with you on that one. Well, just considering the fan base and what you see going on at that Let's just ballpark. say the fans do root hard. Uh, and, yeah, <laughs> and if you're a pitcher back there waiting to your turn, man, you're getting some pretty vile stuff thrown at you from their fan base. Uh, they, they don't throw things. They just well, yell Well, vocally things. throw is oh, what yeah. I mean vocally throw but uh, big congratulations to you uh, my <laughs> Royals about two three weeks ago it was like well you know at the very least we'll get a wild card now it's like God I hope we can get a wild card and what has happened Mike is exactly what we thought would now, I'm not a soothsayer or anything like that but it's such a young team that all of a sudden that collar has gotten tighter and tighter and tighter and these young kids key is Vinny Pascantino not being in that lineup, and he won't be. He's out for the season. He provided protection for Bobby Witt Jr. Bobby Witt Jr. doesn't have that protection now. He's getting good pitching. He didn't earlier, and he was hitting the hell out of the ball. Mm -hmm. Well, now with Pascantino, his, his guardian right there and out of the lineup, it's affecting them, and the fact that they are making a run in the pennant Young guys, for the first time, that collar does get tight. But we'll really see. Tight. They may hold on. Yeah, I hope so. They got uh, two more series that are, I mean, we got the Nationals tonight starting today, and then uh, they close out the season against the Braves in Atlanta. That's but it is, it's one. still, it's three teams going for two places. And the Royals, as you mentioned, play Washington. The team with whom they're tied, and the Royals are tied, is the Detroit Tigers. They play at home today, noontime game, in Detroit at Comerica Park against the Tampa Bay Rays. Under normal circumstances, that would draw a few friends and neighbors. This time, it may have a pretty good crowd. And the Minnesota Twins, who are one game back of both those teams with about six remaining, they will take on the Miami Marlins. So, indeed, all three except for the Royals, and that's it's not fair to say this. They have the advantage in terms of strength over these other teams. The Royals are better than Washington, but playing in Washington, we'll find out. You know, uh, any given Sunday is what they say, and the <laughs> power rankings really is a beauty contest. Really the only team, especially after yesterday, that I fear, really fear, Yes, he is the Buffalo Bills. But also props to uh, DeMar Hamlin, who was able to get that uh, interception almost, what, year and a half, almost almost two years since he had that cardiac situation. Right after the, right after the circumstance that he had on the field that, that stopped the game, and they had to replay it and all that sort of thing. DeMar Hamlin, keep in mind that that was an electrical disturbance. Uh, it can happen. It can happen to healthy people, as it did to DeMar Hamlin. He got a blow to the chest at the just exactly the right time that the heart was in the middle of a beat, I think is what it was, something like that, and it stopped his heart. Actually, it fluttered his heart. It went into, a, oh, not a cardiac arrest as such, but it went into a tachycardia circumstance where he was not conscious, and they were able to shock him back, and he's fully recovered now, fully healthy. This had no physical damage to him at all, and he is a very fortunate young man, and he's allowed to play again and is playing well. Hamlin's a good player. And the Chiefs do play the Buffalo Bills later on this season in Buffalo. What will be the circumstance then? <laughs> oh, it's going to be some. Uh, it, it will be of circumstance, that's for sure. Ned, you stay dry today, and I'll see you tomorrow.